Hey everyone, my name is Chris Anderson and I am at Dry Tortugas National Park. Dry Tortugas sits at the end of a long chain of small islands called the Florida Key that run for over 200 miles from just outside Miami to just over there at Loggerhead Key. And these islands actually used to be coral reefs. Wait a minute! Coral reefs are underwater ecosystems. How come these are islands now? Does that mean islands could just pop out of the ocean and then just disappear beneath the sea just like that? Let's learn more about this Abracadabra Archipelago today on Outsider Classroom. learn why the Florida Keys are above the water, let's talk a little bit about how water on Earth is distributed. 97% of all water on our planet is, like yours truly, in the ocean. Around 1% is below the surface as groundwater, and a tiny fraction of a percent is in lakes, rivers, and streams. The remaining 2% is frozen in glaciers and ice caps, and that is where the action is. Glaciers are really big, really dense sheets of ice that can stay frozen for thousands or even millions of years. They exist either at the poles or really high altitudes where they won't melt and they can accumulate ice as it snows. They're pretty amazing geologic features themselves. They scrape the landscape as they slowly flow under the stress of their own weight. Now, I know what you're thinking. Chris, you are sitting in the Caribbean. What does that have anything to do with glaciers? To help us learn more about glaciers, sea level rise, and climate patterns is my friend and paleoclimatologist, Dr. Rocio Caballero Gill. Hello, my name is Dr. Rocio Paola Caballero Gill. I am a trained paleoclimatologist and paleoceanographer. And so, depending on where the Earth is around the sun and how it wobbles and, and faces or not the Earth, you can have more or less energy on Earth. And that's really the beginning. And, and these things happen cyclically. Um, they're called the Milankovitch cycles. And how much more or less energy in general you get, um, that's the first step. So the atmosphere and the ocean are always in communication, always talking, chatty, chatty up. And the idea is that in these times of like coldness, um, you're gonna have that precipitation and, and that communication between the ocean and the atmosphere, bring that, that moisture towards the poles. And because it's so cold, essentially it's going to allow that precipitation, that snow to fall and almost like last longer, right? And so as you accumulate more and more of that moisture into snow and lock it on the ice sheet, you're sending more of that water from the surface of the ocean into the ice sheet and locking it there. You know, if you can imagine going from a cold period where you have a super huge massive ice sheet to a warm period where it, you know that ice is going to melt and it's going to add the water from that ice sheet into the ocean, the ocean in general would uh, raise its level. So the sea level would rise, right? If you think of Florida, because the water is so far up high, it also comes more inland, right? And so parts of um, the surrounding area of Florida, like the ones that are submerged underwater, they would allow to be you know, places where coral reefs could thrive and all these things. And so in a sense, a lot of Florida was underwater, especially Southern Florida and the Keys were underwater, having these reefs like thrive and be happy. Well, that was when it was warm, right? And interglacial. Then you go down to a glacial cycle. And when it, you go down to the glacial cycle from the warm to the cold, then you start accumulating that ice, all of that moisture from the ocean gets locked on the ice sheet. So the sea level, generally speaking, is going to go down and down and down, uncovering the areas of Florida that had coral reefs. And so now those are no longer coral reefs, you know, under the ocean, they're actually uh, on land and you can see them. And that's essentially what happens in, in dry tortugas. Check this out. This is limestone and it was formed by an ancient coral reef. 
You can even see the fossilized coral from the reef's heyday. 150,000 years ago, sea levels were much higher, probably several meters above my head. This island would have been underwater and home to a teeming, vibrant coral reef. In fact, this whole island was built by a coral reef. Earth's climate would also have been a lot warmer, less glaciers and ice caps trapping water as ice than we have today. But as evidenced by the fact I'm currently standing on dry land, Earth's climate got cooler. Glaciers grew, trapping more ice and lowering sea levels. In fact, during the last ice age, so much water was trapped as ice, the shoreline was 10 miles off coast where the Florida Keys are today. This cycling of warming and cooling climates can be found right here in the rock record. During cooler periods, more water was trapped in glaciers and sea levels fell, exposing more of the Florida Keys to dry land. During warmer periods, the glaciers melted, flooding the Keys and allowing coral reefs like the ones fossilized here to flourish. It's all right here in the rocks. Rocks, fossils, even chemicals inside the rocks can tell us vital information about what the Earth was like thousands, millions, or even billions of years ago. We can learn what the climate was like, what sort of things were living here, where the coastline was, a bunch of other interesting stuff too. But you don't have to come to Dry Tortugas or the Florida Keys to learn something about our planet's past. Pretty much any rock you find is gonna tell you something about our Earth's 4.5 billion year history. That's a lot of history. And you don't have to be a geologist or even an adult to learn something from the rocks. So go outside. Do a little exploring and check out the rocks near you to see what you can learn about your community's ancient past. that's our show. Thanks for watching. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have some uh, interglacial core samples to extract. We'll see you next time in Outside a Classroom. Want to learn more about our national parks? Then hit that subscribe button, friend. Stay up to date and catch bonus features by following us on Instagram, at Outsider.